Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, where you can get a Windows 10 serial key for only $17. And by using my discount code, you get a 20% off discount, making it even less $14. After the payment, you'll receive the serial key, and to activate it, just go to your Windows settings and introduce that same key. And voila! You have an activated system for only $14. Hello guys, this is Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco, and well, today is a beautiful day outside, and well, I guarantee you that if it wasn't for this tutorial video, I would be recording an intro outside. Let's just see a bit of it. What a beautiful day. Not too hot, not too cold, perfect. But well, let's now go into the video, into the focus of this video, the topic per se, which is how to overclock RX 580. I'm using a Sapphire Pulse 8GB version, but if you have a 4GB version, this also applies to you. I will explain the difference later, which is almost none okay so as always uh, I can't stop stressing I really can't stop stressing because people keep asking this question will it work on my card will it work blah 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 this works in all RX 580 cards okay but take in consideration that all cards are, dif are different for example you can buy 10 sapphire nitro cards 10 Sapphire Nitro RX 580 cards and all of them will have different overclock capabilities. That is it, okay? Now, like always in my overclock tutorials, in my overclock videos, I use the AMD inbuilt software feature to overclock. So if you have the, over uh, if you have the, the AMD drivers installed, just simply go to your desktop, click on the right button of your mouse and this will appear. AMD Radeon software, click on it and the first thing that will appear is the home, home tab, it will appear here, the last game you played, blah 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 blah, but what you want in this case is going to the performance tab, open the performance tab and you have the matrix, tuning and advisors, in the matrix you have the GPU usage, VRAM usage, GPU, CPU usage and RAM usage. You want a tuning tab. Open it. And now you have global tuning or you can do for example uh, profiles for each game. You can overclock in one game and downclock in, the, in another for example. This is just an example of course but usually you want the global tuning settings. Now you have everything in automatic, automatic sorry, <laughs> and default. Choose manual. Here on the GPU tuning, enable, VRAM tuning, enable, advanced control, enable, voltage, enable, basically enable everything you can. Advanced, enable, now here on the power tuning, enable it also, and it seems fine for now, okay. Now, the most important thing is the power limit. Okay, depending on your card values, you may have a power limit of 20%, 30% or 50% in the top tier RX 580s. In this case, we have 30% on the Sapphire Pulse. This is the most important setting you can have. Like I always say, putting the power limit to 30% doesn't mean that the card will push 30 or will pull 30% more wattage. It doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that, it just means that if you push the card hard enough for it to want to consume more, then it can consume more. For example, if you overclock further, if you overclock really hard, but you don't put the power limit to 30% or the max you can, then the card may throttle, okay? So you still have an overclock, but um, the clocks will go up and down uh, because you have a power limit on the card, okay? This alone, even with default settings on your card, will make it perform better because the card will consume the, um, the power it needs and not the power you want the card to consume. Now that you have the, the basics, let's go to the voltage and to the frequency. Okay, as for the frequencies, the only state 
You have several here from state ze 0 to state 7. The only state you in fact need to change for hard gaming is the state 7. And from my personal usage, from my my personal uh, experience with RX 580 and RX 570 cards, Polaris cards overall, is that the sweet spot for in terms of voltage and frequency is 1400 MHz. Okay? At 1400 MHz, the voltage that most of these cards will need varies from 1060 to 1090. Okay? These are the decent cards. Some cards may need more. May need, for example, uh, 1100 MHz. May need, for example, 1120 MHz. But you, the usual is from 1060 to 1090. In my case, I tested this card in several in several games, and while some games were fine at 1060, other heavier games were fine at 1070, and the most heavier game that I tested was fine at 1075. Then I tested a lot of other games, and they were all fine at 1075, 1075 millivolts. Okay. As I said before, all cards are different and your card may need uh, 1080 or your card may need, may need 1090, it depends. Just simply put the values, run a game, if the game isn't stable, go and put uh, and increase for example 10 millivolts from 1080 to 1090. If 1090 isn't still stable, put 1100. If 1100 isn't stable, put 10 more millivolts, 11, 10 millivolts. Okay, this is how it works. Um, in case you want higher frequencies, the same applies. For example, try 1450 MHz and start at 1100 MHz. If 1100 aren't stable, put 10 millivolts more. 11, 11, 12, 11, 10. If 1110 isn't, 1120. And then if it isn't, 11.30, and so on, so on, till it is stable, okay? The sweet spot for mine is here, 10.75, As for the, um, the, the previous states, just put a voltage a bit lower than the, um, the state above. So if state 7 uses 10.75, let's put it, for example, 10.50. This one, let's put it, for example... 1030, yes. The previous one, 1010. The previous one, well, since it is lower already, let's do it. Let's keep it that way. Now go to the VRAM tuning. After the, the core tuning, let's go to the VRAM tuning. And the VRAM tuning is also interesting. Well, because the VRAM tuning on the Polaris cards is really, really important. Polaris cards are in fact, um, they are kind of bandwidth starved. So higher VRAM, higher VRAM frequency will increase the, um, the performance by a decently good amount. So I quite forgot one part here and it is the, ver the difference between the, the 4 gigabytes and the 8 gigabytes version, which is in fact usually the VRAM, not only the capacity, but the only difference in overclocking is the VRAM frequency. Usually the 8 gigabytes version brings Samsung uh, GDDR and they have 2000, 2000 megahertz frequency while the 4 gigabytes version always bring 70, 50 megahertz. This is usually some 8 gigabyte versions have 70, 15 megahertz but in those versions you can overclock without getting loser, uh, loser timings, yes. That's all. For the 8 gigabytes versions you can try and use for example 2100 go for it if 2100 is fine tested on tested on several games you can test for example using the uh, hw info 64 go to the last tab and you have the memory errors if you have vram errors if you don't have a stable vram overclocking then the errors will appear that the um, the thing that you shall look into is having zero errors, okay? Because you may have errors and uh, the GPU won't and uh, the GPU won't crash. 
but it will take processing power to solve those errors, so it will be uh, a necessary trade. It will be an, a necessary trade. So aim to zero errors. So in my case, I can use, for example, 2200, but I need to raise the, the memory voltage to 917. Take in consideration that this is not the actual VRAM voltage, is the memory controller voltage. The VRAM voltage can't really be messed up or unless you may end up frying the VRAM. So this is the memory controller voltage. In my case, to run 2200 MHz stable with zero errors, I need to go from 950 millivolts to 970 millivolts. Okay, that's all. And the Polaris cards, like the Vega cards, have an interesting thing, which is the memory timings. So memory timing level 1 is the slowest one, and the level 2 is the fastest one. So if you choose the memory timing level 2, and you still can, uh, can have a really stable system, then use it because the performance will be a bit better. So memory timing level 2 will have lower timings, and lower timings mean less latency, which is great in this case for these GPUs as the same for Vega 56 or Vega 54, okay? In this case let's leave it on automatic because most people will have um, the, the system crashing because of this and they won't really notice so let's leave it on auto automatic for now, okay? Okay, as for the fan tuning, I always leave the fan tuning um, at the, um, the default settings with zero RPM fan and just let me tell you one thing, this is an overclocking and undervolting tutorial. So what you did here was increasing the frequency while decreasing the voltage. Because most cards come extremely overvolted, but this is uh, this has a purpose, which is for the most cards possible to pass through the quality control. So that's why one card may do, for example, uh, 1075, another may need 1090, another may need 1095, and etc. But in most cases, the cards come over voltage, so you can increase the frequency like we did and decrease the voltage. Decreasing the voltage itself will decrease a lot the power consumption and will decrease a lot the heat output. So you'll, you will have a way more silent card with way less heat and more performance. This is a win-win situation and that's why I always do these tutorials. And well guys, there's not much more to say. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video. Also, don't forget, don't, don't forget that my profiles are available for download in the description. So you can go there, download, you have some things to do. For example, you need to, to watch some, uh, to watch a video, to watch some ads, but you don't have to pay anything. It's kind of a trade. So the values are in the video. So if you want a profile, uh, it's a win-win situation. I win and you win because you get the profile and I win some cents from those ads, okay? So thanks a lot for watching. Any doubts you have, don't forget, go to the comment section, leave a comment in the comment section and I'll be there to answer you as fast as I can. And even the community will answer some doubts. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video, which will be really, really damn great. Blah, blah, blah. Really, really damn great. See you in the next one. We all feel safe in that room. But sometimes, sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. I'm here. Why did you bring me here? Hello? Anyone here?